good afternoon let's start so today we'll talk, we'll talk about some basics related to aws how we manage it how you uh, define the things on you do the day-to-day -day activities or you design the solution or you're working for a development uh, area you want to manage the same aws in different dimension but where we need to start in order to learn all these things we need to start from some point right so where we need to start let's see so what is this aws platform contains okay as we discussed it's a cloud platform offered by amazon that you will access using one single url like this but this is not the single location or a single website it has multiple things inside if you go inside you will of these services they mentioned here right so if you look at you will see some 200 to 300 odd services that they are listed here so from where we should start any thoughts or Srikant, any thoughts from where we should start learning? Uh, we need to start uh, how AWS will work like the okay. as we told yesterday. So, so let's say you're working for customer. Imagine you are working for one customer who has the data centers in US, okay, and who has the data centers in UK, like this, and the same customer has some offices. When I say offices, where you'll run the operations and data centers where you will host your servers like this so imagine you have a data center in us and you have a center in canada in uk and in singapore okay and you have offices in us as well as in Canada, UK, and India, or any other location, let's say. So these are the current operations and data centers that are running for any organization, let's say, ABC is the company name, right? so now i want to understand how these all these data centers and sites connected together priyanka any idea you want me to elaborate okay let's say you're sitting in this office right you can access some application which is hosted in Canada. You can access some server which is hosted in US and also some database which is hosted in Singapore. Similarly, you can also talk to people in US, talk to people in Canada over private, private connectivity that you call it as internal private network or, or VPN. Sometimes you call it as if you are connecting from remotely from your home to office network, you will say you're, you're connecting through VPN. So I want to understand how these are connected together. Leave about AWS. We're talking about something in general. They will connect to an IP address to network. Perfect. You connect to IP address. Yeah. What is IP address? 
that's uh, just like an address of an server okay so which ip address whether you connect to the public ip or private ip that is a private right um private so what is the difference between private and public then public uh, everyone can access that ip address but uh, this private ip uh, private ip means so who are all having access to that one they only can access okay so let's say priyanka is connecting from indian office and you connecting from some other geography let's say uk so you're saying you connect you are connecting via private so how that works i want to know in detail come again priyanka connect from public ip address you connect from a public ip address and then all are internally connected through private that is for practice purpose what you are saying is correct but that we will do while practicing things mm -hmm. that is in lab environment you are saying but in real time how it works Right. You got my question. When you are practicing yes. something, practicing you you will use your public IP, you RDP into it, or you SSH into it, and from there you can access the rest of the servers over the internal network or the private network. I do agree. That is that is what we are going to do in next couple of sessions. We will access everything through public IP. So, okay so i'm not talking anything about aws i'm talking about traditional traditional way of doing the things so if i if i'm sitting here in indian office and i'm connecting to one of the server in singapore what things i need to consider so you need to consider this office and this data center must be equipped with private connectivity in the sense you have a private ip here and you have a private ip here but how this ip address will talk to this ip address there must be some private channel right like this the private channel you can establish by using vpn by using vpn please remember so once you connect both of them you call it as site to site vpn site to site vpn so with this site vpn you will connect all the sites across the globe and you will form one single private network so that you can talk to any device within the network that might, that device might be in us that may, device might be in australia doesn't matter but you need to have you need to have site to site vpns across multiple locations so how that site to site connectivity will work and how we going to test it how you can establish these kind of setups and how we can manage these things in a day to day that we will do it when you are talking about vpn in detail in the lab but for now what i want to understand so this is the existing customer setup i want to get rid of few things when i say get rid of few things this canadian data center is eating a lot of budget oh, it is not a profitable business to maintain own data center and singapore data center i want to shut down these two and i want to move everything which is residing on these two data centers onto aws mm -hmm. you you getting my point Yes. 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 Okay. So, because why why I'm why I'm trying to consolidate because the Canadian data center or the Singapore data center has some servers, so has some databases or applications that are running, but the amount what which you are spending and the profit that you are getting is not matching, and you you are it is 
it is unnecessarily adding more cost so us and uk i will continue to run my business on my own data center but canada and Singapore, i want to shut down and move everything onto cloud so when i say cloud there are a lot of things in the market aws azure gcp or whatever the crowd what you're saying fine but i have selected to go with the aws so if i selected to go with the aws i need to understand how i will migrate these two data centers onto cloud when i say aws it's a simple cloud platform where you can host your services so when you are hosting your services what your data center can recollect the yesterday session your data center contain three components your server your storage and your network agree priyanka technically these three components okay so i want to i want to get rid of these components here and i want to go inside the aws and use the aws offered services like pass ias or sas anything anything based on the requirement that behavior will change that we will see leisurely but for now what i need to know if i want to shut down these data centers and i want to use aws services I want to understand where I will host these services. So if you are if you are hosting some data center in Canada, it is nearby US. Why you why you are hosting in Canada? Why can't you host these servers in US and shut down this? Because the customers who are sitting in Canada, they are near to that data center so that those services they can access it easily. That is only the reason we are hosting something in Canada, because majority of the customers sitting in Canada office or Canada across the locations, and also Singapore. I have Indian users and I have some other Asian users who will access the services from Singapore data center. That is the reason why I have hosted a separate data center in Singapore. Otherwise, I can remove all the three. i will host everything in us and i will ask everybody to access from us it is not a feasible thing the, the only reason is you have to host your application your database or your it business or anything near to your customer when i say near to your customer means if a customer is in canada you need to you need to have a data center in canada only that is only the reason we have created a new data center long back 20 years back now it is not profitable i want to shut down it's okay let's plan it so if i want to get get this vanished or get the, get rid of this legacy data center i want to go with the aws so in aws also you have to deploy near to customer means you have to deploy something on canada only you can't deploy it in us you can't deploy it in somewhere some other location so in aws whatever the location that we are talking now that you technically call it as what you call it as hmm? priyanka aws regions okay. have you heard of this uh, yes. yes okay what is a region region means location location means where aws is running their own data centers you can you, you can access it over this portal means you have a business in multiple countries similarly aws has a setup in multiple countries let's say this is all aws and you are accessing through you are accessing through portal console dot aws dot what is this you are not com from this portal you are accessing everything i am tire entire aws but this aws is spread across multiple countries as i said okay like this it it is spread across multiple countries 
maybe in US 1, US 2, UK, Canada and so on. Okay, so each each location you call it as one region. That means the region is one data center maintained by AWS, not by you. How many regions that Azure or AWS has? Let's see. AWS regions. Glo AWS global infrastructure regions availability zones. There's a regions and availability zones. So uh, audible or you're seeing any lag? Explain. Okay, so infrastructure dot AWS. You have to go into that portal. You will see how AWS is connected across the globe. Let's say regions. When I say regions, to support its global footprint, ensure customers are served across the world. AWS maintain multiple geographic regions, including North America, South America, Europe, Asia, and so on. So if I go to India, India and region, look at the color. Look at the color, only one region, which is in Mumbai. That means AWS has only one data center, which is in India, okay, in Mumbai. And what else? Beijing. And what was this? In China, they have two locations. Links here, okay. And Hong Kong and Tokyo. And you have in Singapore, Indonesia. Coming soon. Green ones means coming soon. So like this, you have data centers across the globe. North California, government cloud that you cannot access, Ohio, Canada Central, okay, North Virginia, like this, it has multiple locations. Okay, multiple locations, 24 regions, means they have a 24 data centers across the globe. Getting my point or any confusion? So now if I want to get rid of Canada, where you will host the services, you will host the services in Canada only, but in Azure, sorry, in AWS or in, or in any other cloud platform. So in AWS, you have a regions. Regions means one geography, one building or one location where AWS has their own data center. Please remember. Okay. How many regions? You have 24 regions. Okay, fine. So what is this availability zone? What is this availability zone? Three announced regions means they are they are building three new regions in three other locations. Okay. Sixteen point of presence edge connections for for business, but I want to understand the availability zones. Can you tell me what is this availability zone? Guys, mm -hmm. nice. that currently available. Uh... Priyank, any thought on the availability zone? No, no, you, I you can, no, you can read the statement. You can read the statement. Yes, sir. Okay. Availability zone means, let's say, I want to go with the US 
I want to go with the US or Canada. Getting my point? I want to go with the one of the services. Okay, but that is one data center. Let's say if it is one data center, okay, and you have one server man. Okay, one web server you have. If this web server running in Canada and you are one of the Canada customer is accessing. Okay, if one of the Canada customer is accessing, all of a sudden the server went offline. Then how you will recover it? it. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi, sir. Yeah, yeah. Getting my point. Yes, sir. My question is, I said region one building. That's okay. Yes. But I have one server inside the building. If the whole building goes down, what you will do? Down. Possible, right? Because it is not maintained by us. It is maintained by someone else. So what they, what they did, let's say there is one region. Let's take one, one region example. What is the region? The data center. Data center, okay. So each data center has certain notation. Okay, let's understand the notation. The notation is, if you log in into the portal, US, 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 and each geography. And on the on beside, there is a notation, US East one. That is one data center, one region. Clear? US East one, one region. Where it is located? It is located in North. Getting my point? Priyanka? Still following? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Hello. Yeah. You following? Yeah. Okay. So I said I have one region which is US hyphen East hyphen one in North Virginia. Means physical data center address is North Virginia, the geography address, and logical name for this region is US East one within the AWS. Fair enough, but I said I have hosted one server. If this region goes down, what will happen to this server? I think we need to connect to another availability zone. In no, no, region. I'm not talking about the availability zone. I'm talking about the region. Region is East US, East US, US East one in North Virginia. I have hosted one server. If the server goes down, then you need to do certain certain uh, secondary or recoverability options or secondary ser service that needs to be started in some other location. Yes. Okay, the some other location might be 300 miles apart, West US. Okay, US West 1, US West 2, US East 1, US East 2. So you have to host another server in another location. You technically call it as another region. No, no boss. Who will deploy the servers in two locations and maintain the high availability and all that's that's very very vague we can't we protect within the within the region yes we have an option to protect within the region that you call it as av zones availability zones availability zones means please remember they what they will do they will maintain six data centers in north virginia 
don't confuse yourself if you have a question please stop me and ask me Yeah. Uh, actually, need to face to break for five minutes. Five minutes break. Five minutes break. Uh, you can carry on. Okay. I will. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I will join after. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, I will join again after five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, okay fine. Okay. Thank you. So, availability zone means six different data centers in the same city, and remember, everything is connected internally. So, everything is connected internally means. Everything is connected internally means all these data centers are having high bandwidth connectivity, maybe a fiber connectivity on the back end because everything is in the same city. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So zone one, zone two. Zone three, zone four, zone five, and zone six. Why you need a six different? Because when the customer is trying to deploy multiple servers, he will deploy one server here, and he will deploy another server here. So what happens if this server goes bad? Nothing to worry. You have another server in the another data center in the same location. So the request the user request will come like this it will to this server obviously the server is down because there might be some issue on the server the server will go down so what happens it will automatically fail back to another server in the same data center or on the same region because because it will maintain six different buildings to provide high availability and faster responses and faster failovers for your customers. Clear? Uh, or any confusion? Any questions? Shini, yeah. Um, I think these um, servers, I mean, like uh, in MS SQL, there are mirroring concepts, like, uh, like there are mirroring concepts. Uh -huh to replicate the data into another server same okay so here, is there here, a... here here it will it works in a different way okay okay so but the thing is if you are looking at high availability you don't want your application to go down and you want to maintain the high availability of your application so you you need to adopt the zones within the region within the region within the region means within that city okay okay so within that city, they have a six buildings. All the buildings they will connected. They are connected to each other. And you can deploy your services anywhere. Either in either in zone one or zone two, zone three, and so on. Okay, zone means separate building. If the whole building goes bad, or whole whole building power supply is gone, still you have services that are running in other buildings so that your services won't go down. So, Srini, uh, yeah. just providing all over India, right? Uh, AWS services. Uh -huh. So, only one uh, region is there in Mumbai. Yes, it People... has three buildings in Mumbai. Okay, People who are there, if they want to use uh, in Delhi, they, they don't have a Delhi. We don't have any region in Delhi. Not not, at all, not about region. See, okay. as a customer, if I want to use an AWS server, okay. Uh, if I'm staying in Delhi or some other location, so can I use that? Can I can use that, right? You can use it. Okay. 
So I, I, I'm here sitting in Pune, let's say for example, and I have one server in Australia and one server in Canada. Okay, one server in Canada in AWS, another server in Australia in Azure. In Azure, remember, I can still connect and match it. Both of them. So why, yeah. can't, we, why can't we manage from uh, Pune to uh, Mumbai or uh, Delhi to Mumbai? Yeah, okay, about my doubt is, so if we can connect from Mumbai to Delhi or some other location means, so why they can't both uh, connect those two servers? In case of one is Which in, server? say some server is in East US or some uh, server in India. Uh -huh. See, uh, if what goes down. Let's say, let's say this server is having 5 TB of data. So, okay. Within the within the within the city, I have a dark fiber, and I want to replicate the data of ITB here. How much time? Fraction of seconds because it has GBPS connectivity, gigabit yes. Ethernet. Okay, so you're talking about something in India. So from this region to India, do you have that much bandwidth connectivity? Obviously no. Then. How do you expect your application to fail over quickly onto Mumbai? We still have a couple of services that will replicate across the globe and they will they will fail over, but not all the servers or services. Okay. okay. Yeah. Clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So just to just to provide a high availability for the customers, the availability zones were introduced. Okay. Initially they were introduced to provide local high availability fair enough yes, yes. okay so now you need to design in such a way your servers will be spread spreaded across multiple zones now i want to design something called high available high available three tier application so how you will deploy it Yeah. Server storage. High available three tier application within the AWS. Let's see. When I say high available three tier application, what three tiers you'll have? You'll have web server, right? Yes. And you'll have two web servers, not one. High available means you'll have two web servers. And you'll have application servers. And you'll have application servers. You'll have a database server. And you'll have a database server. Fair enough? So, if I want to design this application in such a way, with everything I want to keep it in East US. Getting my point? So, if I want to keep everything in East US, what I will do, I will keep these servers. And I will keep these servers in two different zones. Means US hyphen East hyphen one. Okay, and I will place this server set US hyphen East hyphen one A. Okay. And another another ser server set US hyphen East hyphen one B. What is one A and what is one B? Zone one and zone two. That's it. Getting my point here? Yes. Sir. Okay. So 
you have a website that the user is trying to connect the request will come to here okay when the request came here this web server will accept and will talk to app server and will talk to db server further and will reply back to user as per the requirement like this okay now the whole building itself is gone so how this request will come to know that this whole building is gone now i need to go here Can you tell me? Can yes. you apply your logic and tell me how this will, as to how this will come to know? Yeah, there will be internal connection between those two server screens. Uh, like uh, connect internal connection is there. That is the reason both are syncing. Syncing, yeah. But how your application is intelligent enough to send the data to one location? If one location is down, how it will automatically send data to another location? In the sense within the same region how it will send a traffic to zone 1 and zone 2 and uh, like uh, synchronous data transfer or asynchronous no so in network standpoint priyanka you back or still right so you need to play some component called a load balancer okay, okay. And the load balancer, you will send the traffic to load balancer and load balancer will send the traffic to further web server, further web server. And you will set some sort of rules on the load balancer. Okay, this load balancer will send, if a user request came in, it will send to this. If the second user request came in, it will send to this. If a third user request came in, it will send to this like this it will automatically do the load balancing 50 percent to this lo location and 50 percent traffic to this location because you are deploying two servers for one website and why you are keeping one server ideal and why you are utilizing one server fully let's utilize both of them 50 50. if one goes down it's okay at least i have a second one even though the performance is not that great at least the second one will serve the customers rather than sitting dumb yes okay so with the load balancer you can do the traffic routing between the availability zones so that we will test it when you're talking about load balancers but now what we need to understand is how these availability zones are helping customer to design high available or robust and applications within the same building or within the same region if they want to run their business in AWS. Uh, Ashwini, uh, still I have a doubt. Uh -huh. the, uh, these, uh, suppose uh, there are two availability zones. Uh -huh. The same data available in two zones or? Um... That design we have to make sure, yeah. You need to design in such a way so data will be available on both the zones okay okay so that will be like uh, very expensive right uh, so if there are six regions uh, six uh, availability zones you, you not don't... necessarily it has a six availability zones it is not required to replicate the data into six zones if you need two zones you use two zones and design like this no you want to use all the six and you want to design it you can design it it is up to you how you want to design oh. or or you can you can use in a different different way the different way is let's keep this sorry let's keep this aside what is the different way let me show you okay so I have one location, one region. Okay, let's say I have three zones. Do you agree? Yeah. I have actually six, but 
in this design, I need a six. I don't sorry, I don't require all the six. I need three. Now hey, in three, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, tell me. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. So in three buildings, what I will do? I will deploy three different servers. Now tell me, this is your web server, this is your app server, and this is your DB server. But if you look at US hyphen east hyphen one is the region. Within the region, I said you have a three buildings US hyphen east hyphen one A. Okay. Second one, one B. And the third one, one C. You have a three buildings. So in each building, I deployed one one server. So your web server will, will be on one building. Your app server will be on another building. Your DB server is on another building within the same region. So if if somebody is trying to access the web application, user will come and access like this. Okay, fine. If by by mistake or if you are unlucky, let's say this web server has been hacked. If the web server has been hacked, the, all the web server will go down. Still, your application and DB servers will be in protected mode because web server is in first building and app server and db server is in a different buildings okay so logically and physically both of them are in a separate separate location or oh, sorry all of them are in a separate separate location so that if one is compromised or one 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 application server or a db server is being hacked you can still have other tires or other application or db layers can be protected by using zone concept uh, in that case, uh, users cannot use that, right? I mean, application, total application, right? because now, uh, now in that case, how we have to design? You have to design in a different way. So, in that case, I will replicate. I'll replicate the same setup on West US. Okay. So. US hyphen West hyphen one. Here, what is this? US hyphen West hyphen one A. One B. One C. So these two are different different servers. So you'll have one more web server here. One more app server here. One more DB server here. Okay. Have you seen any difference between this design and this design? This design has geography based disaster recovery means your primary and your secondary business is in two location two different physical locations altogether two different regions i'm talking about and you can define the load balancing in such a way like this and like this so if a user is trying to access the request will go to this one request and second request will come here third will go here and fourth will come here like this that requirement will change but this is also possible solution using regions and availability zones you can design high available scalable applications like this have you understood both the scenarios how you can design the stuff if you are talking about anything inside the AWS, especially infrastructure as a service, or any questions on this? Yeah. 
No, Priyanka. You can you can freely ask any question. Or you want me to repeat once again something? Possible can you repeat? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. What I'm what I'm saying is, I said if I want to use AWS, I need to strict with some location because let's say I'm a startup. I'm planning to build some application related to some delivery application, delivery app, mobile app. That mobile app will fu function in India for Indian users. So if that mobile app, if I take that mobile app code and uh, deploy it in US, does it make any sense? Every request or every Indian mobile user, they have to send a request to US web server or US mobile application server, which is hosted in AWS in US, but it is not feasible to send every request or every Indian customer to USA for each and every transaction or for each and every application use. So the recommendation is you need to deploy your business in near to your location, which is within the within the India. Do you have AWS feasibility in India? Yes, we have AWS in India in Mumbai. So you need to adopt AWS Mumbai location as a feasible business location for your deployment or for your business to run. In that case, your region will become Mumbai. Mumbai is the region. Okay, I got the region. Inside the region, it's only one building. If something goes wrong, how you will recover it? It's hard. It's hard. Okay. And this Mumbai region has a tightly integration with Singapore, let's say. Means whatever the data that you save it in Mumbai region, it will automatically replicate to Singapore for DR purposes. If in case if Indian customers lose everything, you can still get the data from Singapore. That is your secondary location. That's okay. But I need to deploy some application in Mumbai that to high available application. High available application means if there is any problem with the site or if there is any problem with the location, it still it still should not simply throw errors. It still should not simply throw errors means if a Mumbai location is down, your application should not go down because Mumbai is not a one location. It has three buildings within the location or within the region. Some of the locations will have a six buildings and some of the locations will have a three in AWS. Please remember. Why only three in Mumbai? Why six in US? In US, most of the business or most of the hosting services will run on US data center, not on Mumbai data center. For Indian customers, considering considering the AWS profit and considering the Mumbai, uh, sorry, AWS business in India, they have deployed three buildings in Mumbai or they have deployed their services in three different buildings in Mumbai and created as a region in portal, which is which is let me show you which is. Asia Pacific AP South one. Asia Pacific South one, which is in Mumbai. Fair enough. But this Asia Pacific South one is not a one building. It is it is a combination of three buildings within the Mumbai for high availability. So if I'm designing something for my customer using the availability funder within the AWS, I can design like this. OK, and also I can design like this based on the need. So in this scenario, your servers will be spreaded across two different zones within the same India region is Mumbai within the Mumbai. They have three three data centers. Your servers will be sitting in two different data centers. If one data center goes bad, you don't need to worry. You still have your data and database connectivity application and application connectivity. Everything is available on the secondary location. You can use it seamlessly without any doubt. That is one way of handling the things with availability zones. Another another way is you can you can deploy high available solution across the region. So you, you deploy half a server in Mumbai. You deploy half a server in Singapore so that if Mumbai Mumbai data center is completely banished, you still have your data in Singapore. You can run the application from Singapore. This is also 
another design which will which will gives you high availability and disaster recovery and here in this case it will give you high availability not the disaster recovery if disaster happened means entire data center in mumbai are gone all the three buildings are gone in that case you can do anything it's practically very very vague statement but that is the reason behind the designing with three different buildings Fair enough. Any questions so far? No. Good. Priyanka? Yeah. Right. So, right. so let's go back to our discussion, original discussion. We are not deviating. This is how it works. So in my case, in my case, if I want to shut down the Canada, I need to select Canada in AWS. That means if I want to get rid of this Canada data center, where I need to deploy it, you need to deploy it somewhere in Canada. Ohio, North Virginia, North California, Asia Pacific, Canada. See, Canada Central. If you select it, no. If you select it, you will see the portal will be changed. The portal will be CA hyphen central one dot console dot aws dot amazon dot com that means let me console dot aws dot com cmd ns lookup okay ns lookup you see from where i am accessing NS lookup NS lookup this IP is there no click this IP oh it's not resolving fine they have a hard coded console.aws.com but if I copy the entire URL no if I copy this entire URL and NS lookup check this one man remove these slashes you see ip is changed ca central console dot ca dot central fine if i sell north virginia north virginia simply console dot aws dot com so ns lookup you see 54 239 30 25 52 94 100 something this is in east us console this is console ca dot central one means this this console is now working from canada and this console is working from us on the back end that means whenever you change this one location it will generate a new console that console is the entry point for your data center or for your region but you can manage everything everything from this portal you can you can flip your deployments in multiple locations if i want to deploy in mumbai now i'll simply go to mumbai and select now i can deploy anything in mumbai because my base location now i have set to mumbai let's copy this one copy this one ap dot south so ns lookup ns lookup copy wrong command ns lookup you see south one okay so if i want to identify how it is traveling from my home to mumbai let's see so first of all it will go from my home to my mobile network geo from geo to let's see from geo to timeout okay they have a hard coded they don't want to show the path yeah 10 dot first the traffic went to 10.72 then 172 some server Then 170 to another server. 
let's see again it's time out let's see because that is not shared location they have uh, some connectivity internally to route the traffic from one location to another location but it is taking these many paths to send data from my laptop to uh, Mumbai data center and in Mumbai data center my console is running console is running with ap south one dot console dot aws dot amazon dot com but the, it is taking these many paths let's see it, it will time out it will not show you the clear exact output but it is traveling like this these many directions let's see okay now as per my design I need to deploy something in Canada and something in Singapore. In that case, I need to adopt so one is Canada Central, another location is Singapore, which is AP Southeast Asia, Southeast One. Okay, AP Southeast One in Singapore, you need to select so that you can you can deploy your services without any major impact to your end users and you can run the business from AWS not from the local on premise okay fair enough you have any questions or up to carry on so you see in between you got one IP again timeout that's okay so now I mean uh, sitting uh... Yeah. I mean the data is copying into different different zones, right? Yes. The data is going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So the now the next question is you identified the regions like this two locations you adopted. Now, how you will design the IP addresses for this? How you will design the IP addresses for this? Come on quickly. You need IP address. You need IP address first of all, right or wrong? Yes. Okay. So I said you need IP address, address for your AWS or in the on premise or anyway. You need IP for sure. And you told me you have two types of IP addresses. One is public private. Okay. Other one is public so what is the difference between public and private okay the simple definition is if public ip means public ip means you can access something something over the internet the public ip can be accessed over the internet that is called public ip okay something if you can't access over the internet or internally you can access it okay only internally if you access something that you call it as private ip address okay fine then what what kind of public or private ip addresses are there in the market hmm? like simple uh, facebook is uh, public right so basically you have a two types of ip addresses you have two types of ip addresses ip v4 okay another one is if i v6 okay so v6 we are not using since my childhood people are saying v6 will be in use widely but no one is using it at the moment. V4 is still widely used in all the customer environments across the globe we work for. So when it comes to V4, does V4, V4 has private and public? Does V4 has public and private both or only private or only public? Okay, what do you know about V4 then? 
if it has a both can you give me one example for private and can you give me one example for public Hmm? Okay, so I IP know. address IP v4 why I need I want to adopt IP addresses in AWS without knowing the IP address what you will create how you will manage it in AWS. So the basis we will talk about networking. Okay, we'll 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 do the foundation stone. That is your network. Once the network is established, you can deploy servers on top of it and you can deploy applications on top of it and you can deploy serverless functions on top of it. You can deploy anything on top of it. Right. So IPv4 has three different classes. Class A. Class B, Class C. We still have a lot of other classes. I'm not talking about other D and E. Those are for R&D and reserved for government purpose. So for general public across the globe, whether you are an enterprise customer or a startup or individual home user, your mobile or your home, or your TV, your Alexa, you take anything. Everything will be sitting inside these three classes. Okay, so basically IPv4 is 32 bit. 32 bit IP address means it starts with 0.0.0.0 to 255.255.255.255. This is the end and starting and ending of your IPv4 addresses. Okay, 32 bit, 8 bits, 8 bits. 8 bits, 8 bits. Total 32. That is how it is calculated. I'm not going inside that CCNA topics and all. Let's skip that. But if I want to manage my AWS or Azure or GCP, I fairly, I should know something about networking. So the, consider this as basic network introduction. So if, if we are trying to manage something inside the AWS, at least we should know ourselves what we are doing. For that, Let's consider this as an introductory network topology and just to give you how this network will be set up and how it can be used. Okay. Getting my point? Yeah, Gary. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, class A starts with 10, oh, sorry, 0 0.0.0.0 to 126 dot 255 dot 255 dot 255. This is class A boundary. That is the boundary for class A. So, class B. to 191 255 and class c class c starts with 192.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 to 223.255 255 clear yeah. Hmm? Yeah. right so What is private and public then? My bad. So, sorry. What is private and public? Uh, private means like simple example Wi-Fi. Yeah, perfect. Uh, public means the LAN network. So, in every class, please remember, in every class you have both private and public. Means. Class A has private and public. Class B has private and public. Class C also has private and public. So in class A, the private range starts with 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 to 10.255.255.255. Hello? 
audible still still with me or you lost the connection yeah no problem okay 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 not the 0.0.0, .0 like this zero ip address will not be there and 255 255 1.2 9.255.255.255 and 11.0.0.0 to 126.255.255.255 clear public and private boundary within the class a i want to understand some real time public ip for class a which one let's see here itself this is public class a do you agree your ip range within the class a not starting with 10 dot then it is public Yes. Okay. And ping yahoo.com, let's say 72 series. Right. Yahoo.com 72 series IP you got. This is also another public IP. It is also not under 10 dot series and in between 1 and 126. So it is also another class A. So I want to understood about, I, sorry, I want to understand about class B. So can you tell me class B private range? Let's define it. So class B private range starts with 172.16.0.02, 172.16.0.02. Sorry, 31 dot. 255.255. So what is public then? The public starts from 128.0.0.0 to 172.15.255.255 and 172.32.0.0 to 191.255.255.255. This is your class B. Then what is the example for class B? Any examples? Google.com. Google.com. 216. No. It is 190. Between 190, I need. Ping GoDaddy.com. 208. No. Ping google.co.in 216 no ping amazon.com 26 you see 176.32 176.32 within the range but not 172 right 176 public ip that means you can access the IP address over the internet and you are getting the reply. That is public. Clear? Then let's move on to class C. Private range. Anybody? 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. What is the public? 192.0.0 and 192 192.169.00 to 223.255.255.255. That's it. Whether you are managing from AWS or you are managing from Azure or you are managing from GCP or you are managing from your internal portal or you are managing from your on-premise or you are managing from US, UK, Canada, across the globe, anywhere, you have to play within this boundary only. I need a couple of examples for, I need a couple of examples for class C public. So ping 
google.co.in it is 216 so private range google.co.in 216 in between 192 and 223 216 within the private range okay satisfied right like this every ip address will be will be uh, resolved across the globe if you are able to access it through public over the internet then you call it as public if you are accessing something on the private then you are accessing internal private ip so where you will use class c your wi-fi routers tvs okay mobile tethering or small offices you will use 192 series if you want you simply open ip config you will see some 192 series ip even you can check it out this is this is your private in between your wi-fi net wi-fi router and in between your wi-fi router and your laptop that's a private range 192 168 commonly used in home purpose then this class b where you will use it class b we will use it in mid and small or enterprises you will use this in small and medium enterprises 172.16 joby series that, that's the particular series will be used in small and mid organization then what about class a large enterprise will use 10 dot series in your internal office which, which ip address you will see priyanka any idea You check it out. Check it out. 172. Okay, fine. Fair enough. fine. Fair enough. No, no. When you connect to the VPN, no. Just check it out once. You connect to VPN from your home? Yeah, I can connect. Okay. So, whenever you connect to the VPN, you check the IP address. What the IP address you are getting? You will get some 172 or 10 dot series IP. okay just test it if you want so these are the general available ip addresses boss fine okay cool then in aws aws which ip address it will support Shrikant? yes it is hmm? sorry what you said I'm not getting you. Can come again. AWS. I'm I'm saying these are the general available IP addresses across the globe for everybody. Yeah. What IP addresses AWS is using? But uh, like class A. Can't we use class B? Oh, class B. Not sure. Can't we can't we use class C? But that is large, right? Large, large enterprise. So I have a startup, startup eight servers. Okay, eight servers, two reporting servers, six production web servers. That's it. Nothing else. So do we, do you need a ten dot series or you need a, a one seventy two series or one ninety two? Which one you prefer? For one seventy two series. Can't we use 192 in AWS? AWS. Priyanka, any thoughts? If a private IP address is being used by across the globe by multiple people and multiple organization, multiple homes in every home, we are commonly using it. Means we should use the same in AWS as well. There is no limitation. You can use everything. Clear? You can use class A, class B, class C, anything. But please note, private IP addresses are managed by you or your company for your for yourself or your company's sake. 
public ips are not reserved by you or your company or your partner your someone as some xyz person public ips will be allocated by aws only means if you want to run your business in aws you need both public and private private if you want a private you design by yourself and manage it how you want to manage it it is your wish it everything is in your control private public are limited and reserved for global usage so once one ip is given to somebody the same ip can't give it to someone else in public private range you can give it to multiple people the same ip you can be used by multiple organization same 10 dot series you can use in your organization priyanka will use in their organization in my organization i will use same 10 dot series that will that will accept that is by design private means that is limited to your boundary means if you are in your home if you log in and do the ip config on your machine you will get 192.168.1.1 let's say if priyanka will log in and do the same ip config she will also get 192.168.1.1 only in my home if i do the ip config i am also getting 192.168.1.1 only that means private ip addresses are bounded to your home or your office your data center or within the aws or azure within the your organization or within your scope so that is simple bubble inside the bubble you use it that is private limited to yourself so you can have a duplicate ips in private public ips are unique ip addresses across the globe that might be in aws azure gcp or godaddy or someone else alibaba or some some other xyz vendor or geo or your airtel who is offering the public ips isps basically public ips will be offered by isps internet service providers so those ip public ips you can't maintain in aws as well aws will give you whichever the ip is free now so that ip will be given to you whenever you need it you can't control the range of public ip addresses that are needed for your business when you need a ip address you request aws aws will give you one ip and they will charge you certain amount for that but that you can't decide it which ip you want it clear any 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 confusion on this private you have to design public AWS will take care. Okay. Okay. So tomorrow, tomorrow, not tomorrow, Tuesday evening, 7:30, we will catch up once again. Okay. And we'll start with the labs in the networking. So we'll start with designing private networks for your organization by using AWS VPC. Okay, if you guys want to have some deep understanding what it is, how it is, how you manage everything, you can do some R&D on top of it. VPC we will talk about on Tuesday evening and also on Thursday, the same VPC will continue. Two sessions on VPC dedicated deal. Okay. Okay. okay, understood or confusion or questions. You want me to elaborate some points or you want me to cut down some points? Anything is okay. So, uh, can we refer any videos? These videos I will already up. I will. I have already uploaded yesterday's video. This video I will upload it tomorrow morning. Not exactly this video. Mm -hmm. For this concept, uh, further. Okay. For the same, I have uploaded a lot of videos on the basic traditional infrastructure of VMware. I have around 40 videos that I gave you long back. So you can refer them for a basic understanding of how these IP addresses are functioning. Or if it is creating more confusion, so we will discuss we will discuss in detail related to AWS only in next coming class. Okay. So meanwhile, you if you want to Google something. Talk, discuss or uh, Google about VPC. One component called VPC, Virtual Private Cloud, AWS VPC. Is what is that? Uh, I I can I can hear you. Hello, hello, Priyanka, can you hear me? Yes. 
Yeah. Am, am I audible? Yeah, now, now we're okay. Yeah, but maybe you are having some microphone issue, man. Oh. Okay. What I'm what I'm saying, okay. I, in the next class, we will talk about VPC, Virtual Private Cloud. Okay. Okay. So whenever you get some time tomorrow, you just Google it, and I will explain in detail on Tuesday class. Okay. Okay. And from Tuesday onwards, we can do some labs. Okay. Okay, so any, if you have any questions, it's okay. I'm happy to help. Otherwise, I will stop here. Okay, Priyanka, you good? Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, am I audible? You have any questions? Yes. No, I don't have any questions. Okay, so next class, we will talk about. When thirty to nine. What can you repeat one? Your voice I'm was gone. Okay, I'm saying, I'm saying we'll catch up on next Tuesday evening seven thirty, and we will connect till nine o'clock. Okay. One and a half okay. hour on Tuesday. Okay. Okay. So meanwhile, just just read about VPC. Okay. Right. So I'll stop the recording here. We'll catch up again on Tuesday. Okay. Okay.